Welcome back everyone to my Manchester United career on FM17. Welcome to Season 6. Where has that time gone? And I'm thinking this is probably going to be my final season at Manchester United here on FM17. So I'm hoping and I'm going to be pushing for this to be the best season yet. We've got to go all out. We've got to try and win absolutely everything. And that includes the Champions League. We've put that loss to Man City last season behind us. We've got to keep moving forwards. Now, I just want to quickly point out before we delve into transfers and everything, the owners, the Glazers, have now changed their status to will listen to offers. So that says to me that they're, they're willing to put Manchester United, they have put Manchester United up for sale. Now, for me, this has never really happened on FM whenever I've been in charge of Manchester United. So this is it's going to be something a bit different. Could we be looking at new owners here at United? I mean, I've heard stories that when a, a, a new owner takes over a club, they get rid of the manager, the current manager that's in charge. It doesn't matter how successful they've been. They get rid of them and bring in their own person. So who knows what's going to happen in this final season? It's been a bit of a busy summer transfer window for Manchester United this time around. Let's have a look at the outs first then. So, Henrik Mkhitaryan was the first to leave. He's now joined Monaco permanently. He did play for them on loan last season, if you remember. And in that loan deal, there was an option, there was a clause for Monaco to actually sign him permanently for £7.5 They triggered that. He is going to be playing in League 1 next se well, this season. Antonio Valencia, we know, retired at the end of last season. And I've also sent out Callum Whelan, Dave Hayward, Roshan Williams, Jalovic and Bukart all on loan as well as Sergio Romero. Romero, for me, only really had one or two decent seasons. The most memorable one was a couple of seasons ago in the Champions League. He was my Champions League goalkeeper, if you remember, when he kept a total of, what was it, eight, nine, ten clean sheets. Absolutely incredible. But since then, he's just gone downhill. So... We've, uh, we've found a replacement for him. My first signing of the summer then was a cheap one. It's Alex Vidal at the age of 31. He's a fullback, he can play as a wing back. That's mainly why I bought him to play in the system of mine, this 442 diamond formation. And simply because I wanted a backup since Valencia retired, we were lacking in that position. So I thought, you know, Alex Vidal. 31 can still do a decent job for us. I mean, Lindelof will be number one choice there, obviously. But he joins us from Juventus for 1.8 million. He's got a, plenty of experience, European experience under his belt. And I thought, you know, 1.8 mil, it's a deal that I couldn't really turn down. And as I say, perfect backup really for Lindelof if he was to get injured or suspended throughout this upcoming season. And, you know... Vidal has all those key attributes that you need to be playing in this position, in the system that I want him to be in whenever he does start for us. I mean, that pace, that acceleration is key. The agility, the crossing and dribbling as well, which we've seen from, uh, from Lindelof over the last couple of seasons. Up next, as you know, Sergio Romero left on loan for the season. I have brought in a replacement and that is Timo Horn from RB Leipzig. I think that's how you pronounce the team's name. Uh, he joins us uh, for 11.75 million. They haven't really made anything on him because they signed him from Cologne for 11.75 and we've signed him as well for the same amount. And again, I think he's good backup to have, especially for De Gea, who's missed the whole of pre-season with injury and he'll probably miss the, uh, the first couple of games of the new season. So Timo Horn is a good option to have. I've been looking at Filippo Melagoni now for a few seasons, been scouting him on and off. And finally, it's took me until now to actually make an offer and actually bring him to Old Trafford and he was more than willing to do so. Again, it's another central midfielder. Melagoni, he's another quality option to have as we go through yet another long, grueling season here at Manchester United. And because I don't really use wingers in my formation anymore, we've got to try and beef up central midfield. And because he's on a rotation contract as well, it's going to allow me to jostle that around as the season goes on. Maybe play him alongside Andre Horta or Paul Pogba or Andrew Ferguson every now and again. And finally, we put him on a plane 
and he is back from Spain. It is Cristiano Ronaldo. You guys saw the teaser quite a few episodes back now. And finally, he is back. I can't wait for this. I've never really been able to sign Ronaldo on FM until now. Yes, he's 36 years old, but the player that Ronaldo is, he's really looked after himself. You know, his uh, his conditioning is fantastic. We signed for 77 million. Some would say that's a lot for a 36-year-old, but, you know, we're still going to get. You know full well, with that m- amount of money that we spent on him, you know we're going to get a really good season out of him. I mean, he was 35-36 last season for Real Madrid. 36 appearances, 24 goals. He's going to just blow the Premier League away again this season, without a doubt. I can see it happening And I know he's mainly used as a winger, but I think in this system that I've got, I might use him as a striker. That's it for Manchester United's transfer business then this summer. Let's have a look elsewhere. So 658 mils already been spent. Emery Chan has left Leverkusen to go to Tottenham, so he returns to the Premier League for 72 million. Egerstein has joined up Man City from Wolfsburg for 64 million. Who spent the most? Well... We have. We've spent £135 million. In second, it's Tottenham. They've signed Emery Chan, as, as we know, Carlinhos. And Fabinho, who returns to the Premier League. If you remember, we signed Fabinho in my second or third season. He left for Real Madrid and has now joined Spurs. Jack Butland has also joined Spurs from Stoke for 8.5 mil. Let's have a look at Man City's dealings. Arsene Wenger is still in charge. So they've signed Casemiro from Madrid for a free? I didn't realise he was out of contract. That's two quality players Madrid have let go now this summer. Casemiro and Ronaldo. They also signed Thiago Maia, Man City. Let's have a look at Liverpool's dealings. They spent £79 million this summer. And I'm sorry, but I don't recognise any of those players whatsoever. Oh dear. I have played pre-season, so we started things away. It was a tour of Germany to start off with. We played Leverkusen, beat them 3-1. Then we drew 2-2 away to Dortmund. Then we moved on to uh, Holland, play uh, Herakles, and we beat them 4-1. Twan Zabia with two goals. That was brilliant to see. Romelu Lukaku also on the score sheet, along with Callum Gribben. We played NEC. We beat them 4-0. Romelu Lukaku, Pogba, Robert Lewandowski with another two. For United, Then we returned to Germany to take on Borussia Mönchengladbach. We beat them 4-2. Pogba, Rashford, Lukaku and Gomez all on the score sheet. And then we finished things up at the Allianz against Bayern Munich. A game in which Ronaldo did feature, but as a substitute. But he wasn't on the pitch enough to make much of an impact. So it ended 0-0 there. Up next, we've got Bournemouth in the Community Shield. Then we start the new Premier League season at home to Swansea. Then we've got Leicester, Arsenal, Everton, West Ham... Chelsea, a bit of a tough start to be honest then, Liverpool, but a start that I'm really looking forward to. We finished the season against Norwich, West Brom, Hull, so not bad. I think we'll give it a good go this season. This has to be like our fourth or fifth Community Shield final in a row this season. Let's have a look at Bournemouth sides. So it's Rykovic that starts in goal, Cedric at right back, George, Mangala and Martin Zindi. That's not a bad back four to be honest quite strong they've got Rennie Adelaide former Arsenal youngster starting today but for Manchester United I've gone with Timo Horn who's in for the injured David De Gea we have got Henderson on the bench as an option Smalling and Bay, Lindelof Dyer and Luke Shaw at the back we've got Paul Pogba and Andrew Ferguson in central midfield I want a really big season from him this year at the age of 20 he's showed so many positive signs Aiden Hazard starts along with Lukaku and Rashford up top. Ronaldo starts on the bench as well as Vidal, our two new summer signings. So, let's get into it then, the Community Shield final. Hazard with the free kick now, finds Shaw in loads of space, swings it in, and it's Hazard! It's 1-0 Manchester United, a nice early goal to settle things. Perfectly done as well, fantastic. Why is Luke Shaw so unmarked over here? Look at all that space he was in. Had all the time in the world. Hazard hits it first time, pulls that trigger and makes it 1-0 to Manchester United. Looking for Lukaku there. It's Eric Bay that comes forward, collects the ball. Got plenty of options in the system as we try to break down Bournemouth. 
once again. And it's Frizzle. It's Eric Dyer that's in the way of his ball. His searching ball forwards. Here's Marcus Rashford. Hoping for another big season from him this, this year. Alongside his uh, strike partner, Romelu Lukaku. Just passing the ball around nice and patiently here. Pogba. Back to Andrew Ferguson. Ferguson, I think, is going to be my number one pick in central midfield this year. And it's Lukaku. It's 2-0. Get in. Nicely executed there from United. An attacking move. Lindelof on the right again. Hazard just feeds the ball over the top. Lindelof controls it perfectly. Great first touch and swings it in for that near post finish from Lukaku. Frizzle. And that's it. Oh, I thought Lindelof had won the ball back then. And it's Rene Adelaide that uh, knocks the ball into Rose Ed. So Timo Horn hasn't really had much to do in this game so far. Probably spoke too soon. He's uh, got a 6.9 rating so far. They've only had one shot, and that was that that effort from Jeff Rennie Adelaide then. Frizzle out wide. Swings it in, it's small and it's in the way. And the captain for today. Here's Romelu Lukaku. Can we go and get a third before half time? It's on for Rashford. Hits it, and it's just wide. Getting closer there. Here we are at the break then at Wembley. We are leading Bournemouth by two goals to nil in the Community Shield final. I am going to introduce or reintroduce Cristiano Ronaldo to Manchester United. We're going to bring him on for Marcus Rashford. Rashford's done everything else right apart from the finishing today. And I want to give Ronaldo some minutes as well before uh, he returns to Old Trafford for that opening Premier League game against Swansea, here is Luke Shaw now, does well to get past his man, finds Ronaldo, here he is, first touch of the ball, switches the play over to Lindelof, he's going to look to cross it back into the box, but it is Bruno Martins Indy that gets his body in the way, I fear, oh well done Ferguson, good ball to Cristiano Ronaldo now, take on your man, no you should not, come on Ronaldo, you should not be getting beaten by Martins Indy there, you should be putting the ball past him, running round him. Lindelof to Pogba. Hazard. It's just a team of superstars here for Manchester United. Ronaldo coming very close to making it 3 0 to scoring his first goal back in a Manchester United jersey. Short to Pogba, Ferguson. It's all promising stuff from United. That's through for Lukaku. It's easy for. Rykovic on this keeper who's already been beaten twice. Can we get a third to finish things off nicely? 67 minutes on the clock. Hazard with the corner for United. Can we make it three? Looking for Paul Pogba. It's Andrew Ferguson. Finds Fossi Mensah who hits it. I thought Ferguson was going to pull the trigger first. It's back out wide to Hazard. Swings it in. Come on. The Dow's going to let that run out for a throw in. Ronaldo's injured. That's not good. It's a damaged heel. Pogba with the free kick. Hits it against the wall. I'm not sure what Bournemouth are thinking there. Come on, Vidal, hurry up. Back to... I'm not going to see the end of that highlight. Ronaldo's got this damaged heel then. Is that going to roll him out for the opening day of the, the new season against Swansea? I hope not. I hope he'll be back in time for that. Ronaldo is back on the pitch now. Here is Pogba back out wide to Hazard. Small in, small in hits it. Oh, that was very close. Fasu back to Horn. That should be it, ref. There we go. Another Community Shield goes into Manchester United's cabinet at Old Trafford. Fantastic. I mean, how many seasons have we won that now? We're going to find out. But a very, very dominant game from United. The second half was pretty meh. We could have done so much better, but that first half was blistering. Really good to see. So there's the, uh, the headline then. Manchester United lift the Community Shields. We've kicked off the new season with another piece of silverware. It's all looking promising. So look at that. Four seasons in a row. Four seasons we've won the Community Shield. It's mad to think that we've been in the Community Shield for four seasons as well. Ronaldo's out for three to five days with a damage deal. So that's not too bad. Melagoni should be back 
soon as well. But and Herrera with that long-term injury. Timo Horn has made his Manchester United debut, keeping a clean sheet as well at Wembley. Doesn't get any better than that. He's looking pretty pretty good for United uh, so far. And Hazard was on form as he scored that first goal. So up next, we've got Swansea in the Premier League. I'm thinking maybe the next episode will be this game against Arsenal. Or maybe I'll do the first game against Swansea and then Arsenal, then Chelsea, then Liverpool. We'll see how it goes. But for now, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching.